What is an engine cooling system? Function. Basic components. Types of engine cooling system. Working principle. Common problem and causes. Maintenance of engine cooling system. Frequently asked questions. What is an engine cooling system? The cooling system is a set of components that enables the flow of liquid coolant to the passages in the engine block and head so as to absorb combustion heat. The heated fluid will then return to the radiator through a rubber hose for cooling. As the heated fluid, hot water, flows into the radiator through the thin tubes, it gets cooled by an airstream. Modern internal combustion engines cooled with both water and air, but some engine uses either air or liquid to remove the waste heat from the engine. Special purpose or small engines are cooled using air from the atmosphere, which makes the system lightweight and relatively less complex. While in some engines, heat is transferred from a closed loop of water to the radiator where the cooling is achieved. Water has a higher ability and can quickly move heat from the engine than air. The components in the water cooling system add weight, complexity, and cost to the engine. The system is good for higher power engines that produce more waste heat but can move more weight. Function of engine cooling system The essence of the cooling system in IC engines is because the temperature of the burning gases in the engine cylinder is up to 1500 to 2000 degrees centigrade. This is above the melting point of the material of the cylinder head and body of the engine. Therefore, if the heat is not dissipated, serious problem and failure occur to the cylinder material. Another function of the cooling system in the automobile engine is to reduce the temperature of lubricating oil that lubricates and cools the moving parts. Very high temperature causes the film to the lubricating oil to get oxidized, which produce carbon deposit on the surface. This often results in piston seizure. Because too much heat removal lowers the thermal efficiency of the engine. The system is designed to remove at least 30% of the heat generated the combustion chamber. A functional cooling system should be able to remove heat at a fast rate when the engine is hot. Engines are cool during the starting, much cooling is not needed so that the working parts can reach their working temperature in a short time. Higher temperatures lower the volumetric efficiency of the engine. And because of overheating, larger temperature differences will result in distortion of the engine components due to the thermal stresses set up. For this, a functional cooling system is required to keep the temperature variation normal. Basic Components of Engine Cooling System Radiator High temperature fluid flows inside the radiator through a hose. This heated fluid is then transferred from the tube to the airstream which is then blown away to the atmosphere. Cooling fan The cooling fan is located a bit after the radiator, which is closest to the engine. The part is designed to protect fingers and direct airflow. It blows air to the radiator to cool the hot fluid while the engine is running, so the fan helps to cool down the temperature of the radiator. A modern electric fan is controlled by the vehicle's computer. Radiator cap Radiators are now designed with pressure cap so that pressurized coolant flow out as it expands. Thus, the function of the pressurized cap is to maintain pressure in the cooling system up to a certain point. This cap featured a spring valve, calibrated to the correct pounds per square inch. If the pressure is up higher than the set pressure points it opens and a small amount of coolant is bleed off. Reservoir Tank Reserve tank is a reservoir that collects the coolant bled off from the pressurized cap. The tank is typically made with plastic, and it can indicate the temperature of the coolant. Water pump Water pump another important component of an engine cooling system. It's mounted on the front of the engine and it keeps circulating the coolant as far the engine is working. The part is made of cast iron or cast aluminium and an impeller blade that pump the coolant. Thermostat A thermostat is simply a valve that sense or measures the temperature of the engine coolant. If the coolant is not hot enough, the thermostat remains close, but as soon as the coolant temperature reaches some specific temperature, it opens and allows the coolant to flow through the radiator. Coolant Temperature Sensor 
As the name suggests it is temperature sensing device and engine cooling system and it monitors the engine temperature. It provides the data required to control the operation of radiator fan. The engine temperature display at driver's console gives reading according to the data provided by coolant temperature sensor. Further in the ECU controlled vehicle its data is used to optimize the fuel injection and ignition timings of engine for better performance of vehicle. Hoses The complete circulation of coolant from the radiator to an internal part of the engine back to the radiator and some associate components is achieved by hoses. But the main hoses are known as the upper and lower radiator hoses. They are bigger and wider compared with others. Heater core Hot coolant a lot serve better purposes to the car interior when required. To achieve this, the cooling system is designed with a heater core that many lookalikes with the radiator. The component is connected using a pair of rubber hoses to collect and return the coolant from the water pump to the top of the engine. There is a fan blower that blows the heater core which then supplies heat from the hot coolant to the car interior. Types of engine cooling system the following are the two types of cooling systems for engines. Air cooling system. Water cooling system. Air cooling system. An air-cooled system is generally used in small engines say up to 15 to 20 kilowatts. The air system is used in the engines of motorcycles, scooters, airplanes, and other stationary installations. In countries with cold climates, this system is also used in car engines. The heat is dissipated directly to the atmospheric air by conduction through the cylinder walls. In order to increase the rate of cooling, the outer surface area of the cylinder and cylinder head is increased by providing radiating sins and flanges. In bigger units, fans are providing to circulate the air around the cylinder walls and cylinder head. The following are the advantages of the air-cooled system. The air-cooled system has no radiator or pump so the system is light. In case of water cooling system there are leakages, but in this case, there are no leakages. Coolant and antifreeze solutions are not required. This system can be used in cold climates, where if water is used it may freeze. The following are the disadvantage of the air-cooled system. Comparatively, it is less efficient. It is used in aeroplanes and motorcycle engines where the engines are exposed to air directly. Water cooling system. The water cooling system is used in the engines of cars, buses, trucks, etc. In this system, the water is circulated through water jackets around each of the combustion chambers, cylinder, valve seats, and valve stems. The water is kept continuously in motion by a centrifugal water pump which is driven by a V-belt form the pulley on the engine crankshaft. After passing through the engine jackets in the block and cylinder heads, the water is passing through the radiator. In the radiator, the water is cooled by air drawn through the radiator by a fan. Usually, the fan and water pump are mounted and driven on a common shaft. After passing through the radiator, the water is drained and delivered to the water pump through a cylinder inlet passage. The water again circulated through the engine jackets. The following are the advantages of the water-cooled system. Uniform cooling of the cylinder, cylinder head, and valves. Specific fuel consumption of engine improves by using a water-cooling system. If we employ a water-cooling system, the engine need not be provided at the front end of moving vehicle. The engine is less noisy as compared with air-cooled engines, as it has water for damping noise. The following are the disadvantage of the water-cooled system. It depends upon the supply of water. The water pump which circulates water absorbs considerable power. If the water cooling system fails then it will result in severe damage of the engine. The water cooling system is costlier as it has a number of parts. Also, it requires more maintenance for its parts. Difference between air cooling system and water cooling system. Air cooling system. The design of this system is simple and less costly. Water cooling system. The design of this system is complicated and more costly. Weight of the cooling system, 
per bhp of the engine is very less. Weight of the cooling system per bhp the engine in much more. The fuel consumption per bhp of the engine is more. The fuel consumption per bhp the engine is less. Its installation and maintenance are very easy and less costly. Its installation and maintenance in difficult and more costly. There is no danger of leakage or freezing of the coolant. There is a danger of leakage or freezing of the coolant. It works smoothly and continuously. Moreover, it does not depend on any coolant. If the system fails, it may cause serious damage to the engine within a short time. Working principle of engine cooling system. Just as earlier mentioned, the automotive cooling system is of two types. In this explanation, we'll be covering the working of water cooling system. The system is made of passages inside the engine block and heads and a water pump that circulate the coolant. It is also made of a thermostat that controls the temperature of the coolant and a radiator cap to control the pressure of the system. The coolant flow to all these spots with the aid of interconnected hoses. Water cooling system work by transferring liquid coolant through passages in the engine block and heads. The coolant flows from the radiator to absorb excessive heat production during the combustion process. After the coolant receives the hotness, it's transferred to the radiator through a rubber hose. As soon as the hot coolant enters the radiator, cooling begins. The cooling is achieved by the airstream entering the engine compartment from the front side of the vehicle. After the coolant is cooled, it returns to the engine to carry out the same process. The water pump helps the circulation of coolant to enter toward the hidden passages. There is the thermostat located between the engine and the radiator to ensure the coolant is heated to a certain preset temperature before entering the radiator. The thermostat remains close if it senses cooled coolant, so instead of stopping the circulation process it then bypasses the radiator and returns to the engine. The cooling system is designed with a pressurizing valve to prevent the coolant from boiling. Since under pressure, the boiling of the coolant will raise, the radiator cap is designed to relieve pressure if in case it exceeds a certain point. Or else, too much pressure will destroy the system components like hoses and other parts. Common problem and causes. External leakage. Loose hose clips. Defective rubber hose. Damaged radiator seams. Excessive wear in the water pump. Loose core plugs. Damaged gaskets. Leaks in the heater connection or plugs. Leak at the water temperature gauge plugs. Internal leakage. Defective cylinder head gasket. Cracked cylinder wall. Loose cylinder head bolt. Water loss. Boiling. External or internal leakage. Restricted radiator or inoperative thermostat. Poor circulation. Restricted in the system. Insufficient coolant. Inoperative water pump. Loose fan belt. Inoperative thermostat. Corrosion. Excessive impurity in the water. Infrequent flushing and draining of the system. Incorrect antifreeze mixture. Overheating. Poor circulation due to any reason. Dirty oil and sludge in the system. Radiator fins choked. Incorrect ignition system. Incorrect valve timing. Low oil level. Tight engine. Engine oil too thick. Clogged exhaust system. Dragging brakes. Overcooling. Defective thermostat. Inaccurate temperature gauge. Maintenance of engine cooling system. As the cooling system is very vital in an engine, maintenance must be ensured to save the life of the engine as well as the cooling system. The most common maintenance that can be performed is by flushing and refilling the engine coolant periodically. Doing so, there are numbers of additives in the antifreeze that help to prevent corrosion in the cooling system. As manufacturers will always indicate, using ordinary coolant will cause corrosion which tends to increase when several types of metal interact with each other. 
This will cause a scale that eventually develops and begins to clog the thin flat tubes in the heater core and radiator. The engine will eventually overheat when such happens. Antifreeze is very important as vehicle users must take note of their functions in their cooling system. Since it will increase the lifespan of the engine and also save them some money. The antifreeze formulation can serve for 5 years or 150,000 miles before replacement. It's usually reddish and greenish in color. As reverse flush cooling system required professional and special equipment, ensure the operation is carried in the right mechanic workshop. During the maintenance process, some small important components like a thermostat, radiator pressure cap, water pump, etc. should be tested, if we can sure changing them. A pressure test should be performed to identify any external leaks in the cooling system parts. Parts like the radiator, coolant passage, heater hoses, and heater core. The engine fan should also be in good working operation. Frequently asked questions. How air is cooled engine maintenance done? For maintenance of air cooling system, passage of air is kept clean. This is done by removing the cowling and cleaning out the dirt etc. by a stiff brush or compressed air. Why it is important to maintain the cooling system? Keeping your cooling system running efficiently allows your car to run at optimal performance no matter what mother nature throws your way. The cooling system does not technically make the engine cold but it does keep it at a moderate level that ensures all parts of your car run properly. What is the most important type of maintenance for an air-cooled engine? Routine engine repair is so critical with air-cooled engines because they run on such high efficiency and have zero room for slack. Each component of an air-cooled engine is essential to its functioning so regular engine repair, oil changes and maintenance are an absolute must. Can you flush cooling system yourself? Flush the radiator. Remove the radiator cap and pour distilled water into the radiator until full. Replace the cap, then start up the vehicle and let it run for 10 to 15 minutes. This will work the distilled water into the engine, flushing out any loose debris or corrosion along with the last of the old antifreeze. What happens if you just put water in your radiator? Running just water in your car's radiator will guarantee overheating and damage, including to your cylinder heads and engine block. And most tap water contains minerals that will leave deposits inside the radiator, causing corrosion, shortening its life and further diminishing its ability to cool.